from Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. My name is Father Pat Fitzpatrick. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from three donors. The first is an anonymous donor from Edmonton, Alberta, in memory of her husband Mark and her deceased family members. For special intentions, for those who have no one to pray for them, and in thanksgiving for the daily TV Mass. The second donor is the Bardoff family of Huntsville, Ontario, in memory of the deceased members of the Bardolf family and blessings for the future marriages of their grandsons. And the third is Jane, Janine Milton from Rockwood, Ontario, in loving memory and a happy birthday to her family, to her father, Francis William Hunter. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. We celebrate the feast of St. Maximilian Kolbe. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, may the risen Lord be with you all. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who fill the priest and martyr Saint Maximilian Kolbe with a burning love for the Immaculate Virgin Mary and with zeal for souls and love of neighbor, graciously grant through his intercession that striving for your glory by eagerly serving others, we may be confirmed even until death to your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, but you, mortal, hear what I say to you. Do not be rebellious like that rebellious house. Open your mouth and eat what I give you. I looked, and a hand was stretched out to me, and a written scroll was in it. He spread it before me. It had writing on the front and on the back, and written on it were words of lamentation and mourning and woe. He said to me, O oh mortal, eat what is offered to you. Eat this scroll and go. Speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he gave me this scroll to eat. He said to me, Mortal, eat this scroll that I gave you, and fill your mouth with it. Then I ate it, and in my mouth it was as sweet as honey. He said to me, Mortal, go to the house of Israel and speak my very words to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to 
thousands of gold and silver pieces. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. How sweet to my taste is your promise. Your decrees are my heritage for The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus called the child whom he put among them and said, truly I tell you, unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. Take care that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you in heaven there angels continually see the face of my father in heaven what do you think if a shepherd had a hundred sheep and one of them got lost does he not leave the 99 on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray and if he finds it truly i tell you he rejoices over it more than over the 99 that never went astray. So it is that the will of your Father in heaven is that one of these little ones should be lost. The Gospel of the Lord. Could you name a Polish saint? It's not all that well known worldwide. Maxilium Kolbe. If I was asked a Polish name, I'd probably say, oh, Pope John Paul II. Well, no, this time it's a man who gave his life for another, Maximilian Kolbe. He was born in Poland in, 19, in 1894. My father was born in Ireland in that same year. Maximilian Kolbe became a conventional Franciscan friar and was sent to Rome to study at the Jesuit Gregorian University. I was sent to study at that university too, but I'm no saint. 
As a Franciscan, he worked to spread the gospel in his native Poland, and for a few years, too, as a missionary in Japan. Uh, that's where any similarities between many of us and him would break down. Maximilian always had a great devotion to Our Lady, and due to his efforts to promote consecration to her, he is known as the Apostle of Consecration to Mary. After the outbreak of World War II, which started with the invasion of Poland by Germany, Kolbe was one of the few Franciscan brothers who remained in the monastery there, where the organized which became an organized temporary hospital. After the town was captured, he was briefly arrested, and on the 19th, 17th of 1939, he was, rele he was arrested and released on the 8th of December of that same year. Upon his release, he continued work at his friary, where he and other Friars provided shelter to refugees, including, at that time, 2,000 Jews. In 1941, he was arrested again by the Gestapo and imprisoned in Auschwitz. And three months after Maxilium arrived there, a prisoner escaped in retaliation, 10 prisoners were chosen at random to make up for that one escape by the authorities. One was a young father, and Maximilian offered to take his place. They can execute me. I have no children to look after. His offer was accepted. Maximilian and the other nine were executed on August the 14th, 1941. Throughout his life, Maximilian Kolbe had been active in promoting veneration of and devotion to the Immaculate Virgin Mary. His Polish countryman, Pope John Paul II, had a great devotion to him and canonized him in October 1982. I read he has become patron of amateur radio operators, drug addicts, political prisoners, families, journalists, prisoners, and the pro-life movement. He must be kept very busy up there in heaven, answering all their appeals. Pope John Paul II declared him the patron saint of our difficult century. Continuing to act as a priest, Father Colby was subjected to violent harassment, including beatings and lashings. This was in prison. And once again had to be smuggled to the prison hospital by friendly inmates. At the end of July 1941, 10 prisoners disappeared from the camp, prompting the deputy camp commander to pick 10 men to be starved to death in an underground bunker to deter further escape attempts. When one of the selected men cried out, my wife, my children, you heard it, Father Colby volunteered to take his place. According to an eyewitness in his per prison cell, Father Colby led the prisoners from there in prayer to Our Lady. Each time the guards checked on him, he was standing or kneeling in the middle of his cell and looking calmly at those who walked by or entered that cell. After two weeks of dehydration and starvation, only Father Colby remained alive. The guards wanted the bunker emptied, so they gave him a lethal injection of carbolic acid. He said to have raised his left arm and calmly waited for the deadly 
injection. Father Maxilin Colby died on August the 14th, 1941, aged 47. It became his feast day in the church. His remains were created on the 15th of August, the feast day of the Assumption of Mary. And finally, Pope Paul VI declared him venerable in 1969 and beatified him as a confessor of the faith in 1971. And then his countryman, Pope Paul, John Paul II, canonized him as a saint in 1982. Saint Maximilian Kolbe. Please stand. Let us pray for all those across the world who are suffering because of their faith, especially because of our Christian faith. For them, we pray to the Lord. For people like Maximilian Kolbe, who reach out to others, who are not afraid to come against some difficulties, but keep going. We pray to the Lord. For those who in our lives have been there as models, as people we could imitate, as people we would wish to be as strong as they are. We pray to the Lord. A moment for our own intentions. For these, we pray to the Lord. Grant to us, O Lord, a heart renewed. Recreate in us your own spirit, Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We present our offerings to you, O Lord, humbly praying that we may learn from the example of St. Maximilian to offer our lives to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the blood of your blessed martyr poured out like Christ's to glorify your name shows forth your marvelous works by which in our weakness you perfect your power and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end, we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them so that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and all our bishops. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another that peace. peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Will those of you at home please join me now in this prayer from sacred scripture. Revelation 21, he will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. Let us pray. We pray, O Lord, that renewed by the body and blood of your Son, we may be inflamed with the same fire of charity that Saint Maximilian received from this holy banquet through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us go from this Mass in the peace of Christ. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. Remember, if you can't sponsor a Mass, any contribution, no matter how small, will help keep Daily Mass on television. And you'll receive an income tax receipt for your donation. Yeah.